Moon Knight episode 3 is going absolutely nuts. If you watch the episode and you still have some questions, you need to see this video. We finally made it to Egypt, and here are the details that you might have missed throughout the episode. Steven, Mark, and Kanchu are shit out of luck because they made it to Cairo, but Arthur Harrow is almost at Amit's tomb. Of course, the only logical answer to stop him is for Kanchu and Mark to go X Games mode and seek an audience with the Ennead. If you saw my previous video on Moon Knight, you know that the Ennead is the council of the Egyptian gods. Not even gonna lie, what follows is one of the biggest displays of power that I've seen in the entire MCU. Wow. At least from one of the supernatural deities that we know so far. Kanchu decides to go against his better judgment and creates a lunar eclipse in the middle of the day. Keep in mind, earlier in the episode, he was crystal clear. Using your power to signal for an audience with the gods is to risk their wrath. And if you anger them enough, they will imprison you in stone. If the Ennead collectively decides to go against one of the gods, they can do a special ceremony and imprison them in Anushapti. Which you already know from my previous videos, these are the stone figurines that are used in funerary practice. Is this the reason that Anubis is not judging the souls by himself, we shall wait and see. As soon as the eclipse settles, however, we get another crucial piece of information. Whenever the gods decide to gather, a portal to the meeting will open up anywhere. So far, we haven't even seen that with the Norse deities. But apparently, the Egyptian ones can make that happen, and just like that, boom, we are in the middle of the pyramids of Giza. There is a secret ceremonial temple right in the middle of the pyramid. Listen, familia, you know by now that I am a freak, You're a freak. for mythology, and this scene literally gave me goosebumps. Because in this reunion, almost every member of the Ennead is there through their avatar. Avatars. In attendance at the meeting, we got Horus, Isis, Tefnut, Osiris, and Hathor. Witnessing Kanchu taking over Mark in order to plead his case was wild. Sidebar, the performances from Oscar Isaac are getting better every single episode. The range that we are seeing, mwah, Picasso. Are you still with me? Good, because we got more information. Kanchu was allegedly banished because he apparently almost revealed the god's existence to humans. We know that they're meant to use their avatars to carry out their purposes on Earth without causing any undue attention to themselves. With that being said, the Moon God is emotional because his case against Harrow has to be indisputable. El Nene Conchu is absolutely ruthless. He roasts the God saying that they banished him for no reason and that they abandoned humanity. That's where we get the first reference to the Overvoid. Our boys are pleading to the Ennead to leave the opulence of the Celestial Heliopolis and open their eyes to the fact that Harrow is conspiring to release Amit. But it wouldn't be a trial without the other party present, so Arthur is in the building. Not gonna lie, Arthur absolutely bodied his defense. By the way, I'm covering the biggest detail about this entire episode at the end, so make sure you stay till the end of the video. And if you're having fun so far, feel free to drop a like, you know, it's free. But moving along, he makes an amazing case, saying that Mark is a broken man, reiterating a fact that we, the audience, know that he is emotionally and mentally unstable. Worst of all, he says that Kanchu is taking advantage of Mark and abusing him just in the same way that he did to Harrow. Long story short, obviously, he's found not guilty, and we still got half the episode to go. Hathor, however, is coming to the rescue. She takes control of her avatar, and lets our boys know that the location to Amit's tomb was entrusted to a Medjai called Senfu. Again, not even the gods know exactly where Amit has been imprisoned. And just like that, the Indiana Jones-style adventure is completely set up. Find the Medjai, get the coordinates, go to the tomb, stop Harrow. The only problem, however, is that Gaspar Uliel's character, may he forever rest in peace, he bought the tomb on action in the black market. Arthur ain't about that life, and he intercepts the squad as they're going to get the tomb in order to destroy it. Remember, he doesn't need the tomb, he has the scarab. It's time for a beatdown, and I am not kidding you, the action set piece that follows is absolutely sensational. Mark and Steven are absolutely on the struggle bus because they have different approaches to fighting. And having that duality of Mark and Steven fighting for the body to try to save each other is a really interesting detail. They need to work together and trust each other if they want to defeat these grunts and stop Harrow. We already got a nice tease from the Jackal Chase team, but now the full capabilities in terms of combat from Moon Knight are in full display. Obviously, they win, and we get the most important part of the episode. Pay attention. In order to find this tomb, they have to make a sacrifice. Senfu etched the coordinates into parchment, which uses the constellations to mark the spot. Remember, ancient Egyptians invented the modern use of using celestial bodies for triangulation and navigation, so that's a nice fun fact for you. Kanchu knows exactly what he has to do. Since the star's alignments from 3,000 years ago are way different to now, they could be searching for miles in different directions if there's just a slight bit of misalignment. Thankfully, being the moon god has its perks because he remembers every single night in human existence, dating all the way back to the beginning of time. So through one beautiful and 
grand cinematic event, we realize that Concho is willing to sacrifice himself in order to give Mark and Steven the advantage. They change the alignment of the stars to mirror the ones that they had 3,000 years ago in order to find and triangulate the location to Amit's tomb. This scene shows us how powerful the gods truly are. Even though Conchu is not really the most powerful god in the Ennead or in the Egyptian pantheon itself, he has the ability to use his powers on a planetary level. Never mind the fact that Moon Knight can also stop Mjolnir mid-flight. That's how badass he is. I digress. He gets the job done, but the gods ain't playing no game. Arthur snitches, and the gods start the ceremony quick, fast, and in a hurry, making sure that Conchu is sealed in Anushapti and bound to the Egyptian pyramid. This is where we get the most important reveal and detail of the entire episode. It may not be confirmed so far, but this is leading me to believe that my theory could actually be right. Based on the ceremony that we just saw the gods perform, they can capture the other gods if they misbehave and bind them to the ceremonial temple inside the pyramids of Giza. If you saw my last video on Moon Knight, I explained that in order for Amit to have the power to judge and consume souls, she must have the powers of Anubis. Connecting two and two together, this means that Anubis is either banished, captured, or his powers were stolen. We're going to have to wait for the other episodes in order to confirm that, but the writing is on the wall, and my guess is that our boy Anubis did something very, very wrong. Okay, that was a lot of information, but now you have a solid idea of where the Moon Knight story is going, so make sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe with that notification bell on so you can get instant notice whenever I cover the other episodes, because I'm covering every single one right here on this channel. Make sure to crack a smile, just ride the wave, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Blah!